Jimmy. Hi, Jacqueline. So glad to be here with you guys today. Hey, I'm really honored to speak <laughs> hey. about the topic that we're going to be covering tonight in our groups. Yeah, if you feel a little bit of nervous energy, it's because we're talking about sexuality. <laughs> um, and this is such an important conversation. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And it's a conversation that needs to start with a foundation of love, like for, for everyone, for us as we talk, for everyone listening and who are about to have conversations, like what we need to know is God loves you yeah. and we love you. Yes. Um, the foundation of this conversation is love. When yes. we face like disagreement or um, you know whatever yeah. in this conversation, mm. we just need to love each other well. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Anxiety is real, and uh, I've got some for this conversation. Heck yeah. Um, yeah, just thinking about like personal experiences and and um, growing up in the church and you know yeah. having heard pastors and leaders and students talk about this conversation in yeah. a way that's sometimes hurtful or shaming and that's so um, mm -hmm. I'm just really grateful to be at a table with two people who I know care about me and who I care about deeply and yeah. I trust I can be honest with and will be honest with me and so yeah for sure yeah those feelings are totally real the anxiety the maybe you're also feeling this like nervousness or it's like an awkward topic or sensitive topic and when we have a topic that all of us are coming with like maybe really strong feelings or some of us don't really have strong feelings and some of us think about it a lot some of us don't think about it at all some of us sure know really strongly what the church or what the Bible says about this topic really agree and some of us really disagree and some of us don't really know what the Bible or what the church says. So I mean w when we talk about this kind of a topic all of those are super natural and I don't shy away from maybe potentially even disagreeing because of this kind of a you know everyone's coming from a different angle on this topic um, right. and I even in the midst of disagreeing or whatever those feelings are or lack of feelings are want to move towards this topic towards you guys towards empathy and even if i don't agree or don't understand i want to move towards understanding that's our goal amen right and those differences actually like are a strength to our community yeah you know like one of the things yeah. we say all the time is like everyone belongs you know i got Woo! multiple uh, multiple stickers maybe you got the <laughs> stickers too um but right like this value uh, is is so important to us as a community to make yeah. sure we're a place where everyone belongs yeah um and it's also important for us yeah. uh, to be a jesus-centered community yeah. wherever mm -hmm. people are at yeah. on that journey um we're a jesus-centered community um and jesus uh takes the bible seriously yes and so as a Jesus-centered community, we also take the Bible seriously. And so when it yeah. comes to any topic, we want to look to the Bible for wisdom. Um, and for this topic, we are going to do the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Right. Yes. <laughs> okay. And uh, yes. And I agree that there is so much wisdom in the Bible. And sometimes I get this question in my head of like, yeah, but the Bible was written like thousands of years ago yeah. and uh, like to people who were in living in a different culture than me yeah. or spoke different language than yeah. me. And so For sure. like, um, like, why is the Bible relevant to my life still? <laughs> totally. Super valid question. And one way that I like to think about it is in comparison with my car. Okay. So, you know, okay. take it or leave it. <laughs> but from the beginning, God, through the Bible, um, has stated that our bodies, um, human beings, including the way that human beings relate to each other, including sex, were created by God. And yeah. God is the creator, God is the designer, and when it comes to a creator, with a design, they're the person who has the most and best information about the purpose and about the yeah. design and how to have the best life of the creation. So the folks at Toyota have a design for my Toyota Prius. Prius. I have a Prius too. You have a Prius? <laughs> Prius family. <laughs> Made and by Toyota. Okay. Made yeah. by Toyota, the designer. And this designer, this creator, or maybe team, um, they have a design, right? They have a purpose. Yeah. And they told us that the best life that our Toyota will have if, is if we put what in the gas tank? Yeah, gasoline. Is it gas? Is it gas? It's not a true question. And so if that's their design, I can either make choices in alignment with that design. Or I can make choices that 
include putting maybe Mountain Dew in my gas tank, which is not in alignment with the design. When I was in high school, I put a lot of Mountain Dew into my gas tank, if you know what I mean. <laughs> the folks sugar, at Toyota get sugar. don't really have advice for that situation. Okay. But if I make choices against the creator's design, I can't really expect my car to have the best life or best mm. experience. So in looking at the way that life is designed or human beings are designed, if God, as a good creator, has yeah. a good design, for life and for human beings and for sex and for the ways that our bodies work and interact with one another, we can make choices that are in alignment with that or we can make choices that are not in alignment with that. But if we do, we can't expect the best results. Mm. Sure. Yeah, and one of the things that you were alluding to is kind of a throwback to the conversation we had last week yeah. about the fact that like we are embodied, our soul, our spirit, our mind, our body are all intricately connected yeah. and that's like part of God's design so the way we use our bodies right yeah. we talked about honoring God with our bodies um, you know and we we can use our bodies to give people high fives high five. or hugs or this you know and this, oh, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right and we can have awkward moments with our bodies totally. and, but like and, and, and sometimes like our bodies are used like sexually and like mm -hmm. honoring God in, in that way. Yeah. Like, but like this embodiment of our presence with one another, like mirrors something good about God's design yeah. for, for the way that we're humans in this yeah. world. Sure. Okay. Okay. So like most of us will experience sexual desire, but mm -hmm. like yeah. not all of us are gonna have sex. And like God's design is that Sex is for like a marriage of a man and a woman built on his love. And so mm. within that design, like not everyone's called to marriage. So what, 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 <laughs> what is like, what does that mean? What is that? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because in God's church, some people get married, some people don't. And mm. all of us have a place and are yeah. valued and has um, an invitation to the sense of belonging in God's community. Um, and you're absolutely right, because on one hand, in the Song of Solomon, chapter one specifically, but the whole book, it describes this good, this beautiful sexual desire and passion yeah. um, that is that is described in the Song of Solomon in trust and intimacy and passion and safety that are good gifts from God. But on the other hand, we also have examples in the Bible, for example, from Jesus, who never experienced sexual activity or sexually yep. engaging with anybody, but lived to the fullest and best life of a human being, of what it means to be sure. a person, what it means to be human. And he engaged in intimate relationships and compassionate and sacrificial relationships yeah. without experiencing sex, right? And so Jesus, his, his message about love, the greatest love wasn't marriage, wasn't dating, wasn't, you know, having a crush on someone. It was this friendship that gives, yeah. right? That's the greatest of all loves to experience as a human being. Wow. And Paul also teaches us in 1 Corinthians 7 that whether we're married or not married or not sure that um, our whole goal is to do what will help us serve God mm. the best with the fewest distractions. Yeah. 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 Okay, like a little recap. God, mm -hmm. okay, God created sex and it's like, it's supposed to be this really good thing. Yes, yeah. And yet, like, I know people and like, in my own story personally, like, <laughs> bad experiences with sex happen. Same. And yeah. so, yeah. like, um, I don't know, what would you guys say to someone who's struggling with like, how sex could be good or like, why it was even created? Sure, yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. it's it's good to like pause and just like ponder like what what might God's like intention be mm. um, for this? And one of one of the places to like really spend a lot of time pondering is is this difference yeah. between what we hear from the world around us and the invitation of Jesus. Yeah. Right, the world around us around us is, is so focused on uh, this idea that we exist to express ourselves. Mm. That the peak mm -hmm. of being a human is expressing ourselves mm -hmm. um, in a lot of ways, including sexually. Yeah. The invitation of Jesus is to become the kind of person that expresses God. And that's a very different kind of way to of be human, human in the world. Yeah. 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 Um, and to express the characteristics of God to the world around us. And I, I think like one of those characteristics that's like super compelling to me is this idea of God being self-giving. Yes. Mm. Um, 
I, I think we get a lot of messages regarding sex that it's very selfish, like exactly. self gratifying, like it's for yeah. me and what I experience. Yeah. And you know, like I, there's just this beautiful invitation I, I find really compelling about it being for the goodness of the other to ex exhibit this characteristic of God's self-giving nature um, embodied in, in lots of ways, including sexuality. Yeah. And then just that like God's desire is like for people to uh, like this, this sexual connection that people can experience for that to point to him. Um, and so these feelings of having a crush yeah. or um, for married people like having sex or just like experiencing these connections can actually point to God's love for humans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a super messy topic and I'm so sorry to hear about your bad experiences and yeah. for those of you who have had bad experiences, um, we hope that you know we can we can be honest about them and recognize that that was not the original intent. That's not the original design. So much love and grace. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's we're here for it. Yes. And being a Christ follower means saying yes to that design, right? That intention um, that God's design for sex and for love is for all of us to experience life and love to the fullest to have dignity that comes from him, to be in right relationship with God and with others in your group and with us here and his, that's his original intent. And um, that, that can still be something that we focus on, that we fix our eyes on um, yeah. when we are in our bodies, when we're speaking with our words, when we relate to other humans. Amen. Yeah. Okay. All right. I feel like you guys have done a great job of like walking through some of my questions. Sure. And, yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Um, but I still got more questions. I don't know about anybody Anyone else. Anyone else? Is, is <laughs> really? like 15 more minutes questions? or whatever this is like not enough time to cover everything related <laughs> to sexuality? I know. I know. Um, but yeah, so a couple of resources that are available to us and, and to anybody else yeah. who has questions mm -hmm. um, are on the Black Hawk website. Yep. Charles Yu just did an excellent sermon on kingdom sexuality. Yes. Yep. And then there was a Q&A that followed that up um, that relates to all the questions Charles yeah. can answer on stage. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then I just want to like acknowledge that this is a personal topic with That's lots of name. tough feelings and yep. questions of like, is it okay that I'm thinking about this mm -hmm. or feeling this way and it's yeah. confusing or scary or weird or are you feeling mm -hmm. nothing at all? I don't know. <laughs> but um, if you want to have a conversation with a human being, um, there's going to be an opportunity for you to do that tonight and going forward. There's a, a form that your leaders have that they can give you to fill out to just ask to sit down with someone, have a Mountain Dew or coffee or whatever, <laughs> and uh, chat about what you're thinking or what questions you have. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Thank you guys for showing up with your best and most open hearts, most gracious and understanding and wanting to give me and give each other the benefit of the doubt. For sure. Yeah. Hearts and ears and mind. And I, I want to pray for the discussion that we're about to have in our groups and just thank God for this conversation that we have. Can we take a second to pray right Definitely. now? Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Do it. Alrighty. Jesus, thank you for this gift that was this conversation that I got to have with Jimmy and with Jacqueline. And I pray, Lord, for the conversations that we're about to have in our groups, that our minds would be open, our hearts would be open to sharing honestly um, what's on our minds and on our hearts, not necessarily what we think maybe others want to hear or that we should be saying, but really to be honest with ourselves and with others and ultimately with you, God. And would we also be open to the perspectives of others in our group? Would we um, be open to listening to others in our group? And would we be open to your perspective, God, and what um, you are saying? Would we be good listeners to you as well? We love you so much. We're so grateful to you for the good gifts that you have given us, Lord, in love and in community and in conversations like this, Lord. And um, we pray all of this for your reputation, for your sake, and for the benefit of the community that you are building in and through us. Amen. 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 Well, we, uh, we hope this conversation serves your conversations. This is a topic that demands conversation. And yeah, so, a thousand percent. Absolutely. Yeah. May God bless the conversations that you have tonight and beyond. See you, everybody.